Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the story of the people of the cave, a group of young men, that these young men, they lived in a time, in a time when the people, the vast majority of them were worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were upon shirk and disbelief and they had idols that they would worship and they would prostrate to them and they would sacrifice to them and they would make dua to these idols besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned the group of young men who resorted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that group of young men, as majority of scholars say, they came between the period of Isa and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And during the time in which the religion of Isa alayhi salam was preached in a secret manner. And there were young men during the time of an oppressive tyrant leader, as the scholars say by the name of Daknayos. And Daknayos was a Roman governor under the Roman emperor. And it was a town and a city that the scholars say somewhere around Sham. Daknayos was a tyrant king and he was very oppressive. And he was a pagan. He used to order and enforce the worship of idols on his people. And anyone, and anyone that does not follow his orders, he used to persecute them or execute them or he used to punish them and torture them. Seven in number, as is mentioned in the Quran, these seven young men didn't know one another. They were individuals from different parts of that city, from different families. They weren't friends, they weren't brothers, they weren't relatives, they weren't colleagues. They were just seven individual young men. Those young men, even though they lived at a time when the people were upon shirk, they were upon their fitrah. And they understood and they realized that their people, the shirk that they were upon was wrong. And the fact that they were worshipping other than Allah was not what Allah Azza wa Jal wanted from them. And so they came to the realization of Tawheed, that Allah Azza wa Jal alone is deserving of all worship. Until those seven young men were sitting together, all of those other people are upon shirk. Imagine living in a society where the vast majority of people are not only upon shirk, but the vast majority of them are enemies to those who oppose that way of life. So those seven young men, they sat under that tree. And one of them spoke and he said that we all know that we're sitting here for one reason. We've all sat here for the same reason, but who from amongst us is brave enough to speak and mention this reason. So after some time, one of them, he built up his courage and he said, I came here because I don't believe in the shirk that my people are upon. I believe that we should worship Allah and Allah alone. And then the other six concurred and they agreed. And so those seven people agreed that they would worship Allah alone together. This is now when they become a unit, a community amongst themselves. And so they agreed that they would worship Allah, but they would do so on the outskirts of their town so that the people wouldn't see them. Because if they saw them and they knew what they were up to, they would persecute them for their beliefs. So they would go every so often to the outskirts of their town and they would worship Allah. But Allah Azza wa Jal didn't want these seven young men just to worship Allah and to die in that way. Allah Azza wa Jal wanted to make their lives a lesson for us today. He wanted us to know about it through the Quran. So Allah Azza wa Jal decreed that after some time, a group of people would walk past them as one day they were worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal and they would see what these people were upon that they were worshipping in a way that was alien and foreign to them. They weren't worshipping their gods and their idols in the way that they were accustomed to. This was some new form of religion. And so they took this straight to that tyrant king and they told him that these group of young men have changed your religion. They've come with a new religion a new act of worship. They claim that all of these gods that you worship are false gods and that you should worship Allah alone. When Daknayos, that tyrant 
an oppressive Roman governor heard of those young men worshipping someone beside the idols that he was worshipping and those idols that he was enforcing their worship over his people, he got them together. When they stood in front of that governor, when they stood in front of that man, that tyrant man, Daknayos, Daknayos asked him, who do you believe in? So they said, Allah is our Lord, the Lord of the heavens and the earth. We would not worship anyone beside him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we say anything beside that, then we are saying what's wrong. They stood firm. And Allah Azza wa Jal is the one that says in the Quran Kareem, He is the one that made them firm. Those young men said that these people had taken a Lord beside Allah Azza wa Jal. Where's your proven evidence that these idols are the Lord's? Where's the proof and evidence that these statues are the ones who deserve to be worshipped? There is no proof. But the common sense says that you shouldn't worship something that you make with your own hands. You are the one that made these idols. That the idols should be worshipping you, not you worshipping the idols. Daknayos, he enforced his oppression over those young men. And he forced them to worship someone beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he gave them one last chance. And some of the scholars narrate that those young men came from a hierarchy family. So the governor was still afraid to punish them from the first time, so he gave them one chance. He gave them one full day for them to come back to him and to submit to the idols that he worships. So those young men went. And then they spoke with one another. And they said, Why don't we isolate ourselves from them? Leave them and let us leave the city. And let us go to a cave. Maybe this is where we could obtain Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and rahmah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show us the right path. And Allah azza wa jal will separate between us and them. So when they were given that chance, they sat and decided on to leave the city and go to the cave and wait for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rahmah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded in a way that was beyond their imagination in a way that would become a miracle not only for them and the people that lived at that time, but it would serve as a miracle of Allah Azza wa Jal throughout the ages. Until today, we still read about the story of these young men. These young men weren't prophets of Allah. They weren't messengers of Allah. They didn't receive revelation. No angels came to them with an army. These were a group of young men. Simply by the strength of their iman and their taqwa, Allah Azza wa Jal gave them an amazing miracle. So what is that miracle? They came into this cave and Allah Azza wa Jal decreed that they would sleep for over three centuries. For 300 years, they would lay asleep. But Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't just tell us that they slept for 300 years. He tells us how the universe came to their aid. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused the sun and other things from amongst the universe to come to the aid of these young men. Why? Because when Allah Azza wa Jal wants to help his believing slaves, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need to send an army. He doesn't need to do anything. He just simply issues a command B and it is. Allah Azza wa Jal says that as those group of young men lay within that cave and as they fell asleep, thinking that they were only going to rest for a short while, Allah Azza wa Jal decreed that they would sleep for 300 years. But in that time, a lot would change. So Allah Azza wa Jal preserved their bodies, preserved them in such a way that after three centuries when they woke up, they felt as if they had only just gone to sleep. So Allah Azza wa Jal used the sun so that the sunlight would strike their bodies. You will think that they were awake even though they were asleep. Some of the scholars of tafsir, they say that the meaning of this is that they would sleep with their eyes open or with one eye open and then it would alternate between their eyes. Allah Azza wa Jal also mentions, we cause them in, to, in their sleep to turn from right and left. All of these signs that Allah Azza wa Jal gave them so that he would preserve their sleep. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, this is from the signs of Allah. Whosoever Allah decrees is guided, then he is truly guided. And as for the one that Allah misguides, then you will never find for them a guide nor a helper. So Allah Azza wa Jal preserved their sleep. Not only that, but Allah also mentions that along with them, there was a dog that accompanied them. When they wake up, they start to ask, 
When they wake up, they feel they've slept for a long time. So one of them said, how long did we sleep for? One of them said, it looks like we've slept one day or two days or some days. One of them said, it looks like, no way, no. It's impossible to sleep for one day. It looks like it's, we slept half a day. We came here in the morning. Now the sun is setting. So they start the question. They didn't even know how long they slept for. They slept for 300 years and they didn't even know how long they slept for. Then one of them said, Allah knows how long we slept. Let's not get into the details for how long we slept. Let us say we slept two days, three days. But the common sense will not say 300 years. When they wake up, they were hungry, they were starving. So they said, let's not just argue and debate over how long we slept. For we're starving, we're hungry. So why don't we send someone from among us who will go in a secret manner, covering himself, go to the city and get some food. They said, send someone to buy his food, but not any food, the pure clean food. A part of the preservation was also that when they woke up, they would wake up with the same feeling of terror and fear in which they went to sleep. The climate has changed. The geography has changed. The terrain has changed. Those people that they went to sleep, those people have died. Their children have come and died. The next generation has probably come and died. But those people, those seven young men, when they wake up, they still have that same feeling of terror, that same feeling of fear. Because if those people learn where you are, they will stone you to death or they will make you apostate from your religion. And then you will never be successful. One of them leaves the group of seven and he goes back to the town. Ibn Kathir rahimahullah says that when he bought some food and he gave the money to the store owner, he saw this money and it was a different type of currency three generations or three centuries later that the people were using. And so he wasn't accustomed to this currency. So he took it to the next person in their market. And that person also didn't recognize the currency. And so they went to the third person. And like this, slowly but surely, the people came to know that this young man was from a different time, a different place. It wasn't someone that they were familiar with. So the shopkeeper said, you found the treasure, didn't you? He said, no, but Allah, it's the normal money. He said, what do you mean the normal money? It's got on it the rule of the He said, isn't it the ruler now? He said, no, he died 300 years ago. And that was the amazing news for them. And then the whole city got together and it was taken to the new governor then. That governor was a Muslim, as the narration says. And some of them say he wasn't, but he was a just ruler who followed the religion of Isa alayhi salam and then the ruler welcomed this man after hearing this amazing story he asked him where's your other friends where's your other mates where's your other colleagues where's your other, where's your other brothers he said they're still waiting for us in the cave he said let us go to the cave he went with that young man to see and meet the rest of the, the young men when they arrived to the cave they were alive they went inside that cave and Allah took their soul. They were the people of the cave. Young men who sacrificed everything they had for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for the sake of pleasing Allah azza wa jal and for the sake of not drifting away from the worship of Allah Almighty. Young men who gave up everything they had for the sake of the pleasure of Allah azza wa jal. Because of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them an amazing story to the day of judgment.